Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the GPU Technology Conference in San Jose, and I'm here with Anna and Ivan from the Digicortex project. So, uh, what is this thing, and who is it designed to help? Okay, so Digicortex project started about a year ago as a kind of a hobby project of mine. Um, I got interested into spiking neural networks, which are a very precise way to model real neurons. So unlike the old neural networks like uh, perceptrons, these things also model time. And uh, thanks to that, they're actually able to emulate real behavior of human neural cells, which is spikes. Okay. And uh, this is this got me interested, and because I was doing a lot of coding in my past, uh, like audio coding and so on, and uh, I like optimizing things. And in the neural networks, there is quite a lot of things you can do to make them faster. And a kind of a sad state of today is like you can't really simulate a human or an animal brain because it's so big. And uh, CPUs of today, they're just not up to the job. So I was like, okay, let's see how much you can speed these things up. And this is how the Digicortex started. Okay, okay. And you were telling me earlier that uh, when you first thought about this GPU, you were a little dubious. You didn't, you didn't think that was going to fly, I did you? I was, because I, s I noticed like many times people compare GPUs and CPUs, they were using not so optimized CPU code. So the mm -hmm. figures were like, okay, is this really possible? But then in the course of a couple of months, I completely changed. I became a believer in this because believer. it's uh, it really, really managed to speed things up with the with the CUDA. Okay. And pretty amazingly so, considering the fact that I spent about a year optimizing CPU code, and uh, that's like a few months ago. I talked to Anna, uh, who is a CUDA expert here, and she told me, well, you know, this what you're doing is so parallel that GPUs and the CUDA are the right thing for this job. And I was like, okay, you know, let's give it a try. And even after a few months, it's already many times faster than a heavily optimized CPU code. I was like, whoa, it's cheaper, it's many times faster. Well, this really works. It's not an advertisement, so I became a believer. Okay. So can, can you show me the uh, how, how it works, Ivan? Or right. just give me a, a demo. Of so this is a visualization. So the project also has an OpenGL renderer, yeah. which is kind of rendering the activity of the network. Yeah. So what you see here is about 16.7 million neurons with about 3.5 billion synapses. And this is running, this is the old version, which is running on a CPU, and it's running in about one thousandth of real time, meaning it needs one thousand seconds to simulate a second of a simulation. Okay, so to get the 30 frames of this movie, that took a long time. It took it? a long time. A long time. Exactly. Okay. But it is, it's gorgeous. It's very pretty. Thank you. Okay, so, so enter the GPU. Why don't we switch to Anna here, because I want to I wanna find out how you made this leap. So Anna, I understand you were an early adopter of GPUs for computing, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm totally in love with GPUs. I started when the first CUDA version was out. It started related to my PhD research on compression algorithms, and I was like, wow, you can do amazing things. CUDA really empowers people to do beautiful, beautiful stuff. And that's the, the reason, actually, how I joined uh, Ivan on this project. He showed me this visualization, and I was, wow, this is so beautiful, so beautiful. And I couldn't believe that the whole thing is running on a CPU. OK, after a little bit of a chat, we figured out it's not really just a CPU. It was a multiprocessor, a, a 16 cores in. Mm -hmm. And but it, it has so much parallelism. So I thought, wow, th this is just a perfect thing to, to run on a GPU. And uh, we started a couple of months ago, just uh, porting this highly optimized CPU code to the GPU, and made really really nice success so far. We released the first CUDA version last week. <laughs> okay, okay. So what what kind of speed up are we talking? We were talking a, a, a thousand seconds to record what a frame or a, a second, right, it, with the CPU. What are you able to do now with this first iteration on CUDA? Yeah, yeah. Well, the first iteration on CUDA, we managed to get to 100,000 neurons in real time and 10 million synapses, which is really like like a nice number. So chip makers are making chips with 1,000 neurons, just for comparison, to give you an okay. idea of the number. Okay. And that's just like our first CUDA code. Uh -huh. I plan to optimize it. To do, uh, I talked with NVIDIA yesterday about some optimization opportunities. So we hope to go to much higher scale and oh. also implement a multi-GPU solution. Yeah. So that's like the 
the next big thing. Okay, so when we were talking, what, 100,000 neurons, that's like, what, like a cat brain or a dog brain or something no, about that size? Or, no, no, no How not much? really. I think we're going to need uh, NVIDIA computer plants for a cat brain. <laughs> okay. Hi, NVIDIA, so if like you're a... watching, send us one. <laughs> okay, so just the, the, the lizard brain of the cat brain. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So, so cat brain has uh, 300, 300 million, million. Yeah. Okay. neurons, so we're okay. a long way from that, but... I think that with a multi-GPU solution, if even on a home PC, we could maybe do one million neurons quite soon. Actually, we are set to get to that level this year. Okay. okay. That's well, th goal. well, this is very exciting. So, so how far away would you estimate that we are from doing the whole human brain uh, at the progress you're showing now? Oh, well, Years? Uh, yeah, well, that's what I told you. Human <laughs> brain is no, not just neurons. <laughs> it's not just neurons. Okay. Yeah. Well, mine is like only one that's left working, but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but there's, there's more complexities than just the, the network you're saying in, in the yeah, human brain. Yeah, of yeah. course. I, I think the, the, we have to go really, really long way to understand how human brain even works, and uh, there are tons of people working on that, making it. Uh, little steps every day yeah, but yeah. what we can do is uh, simulate maybe audio auditory and visual systems, systems of uh, uh, animals and uh, to, to do some interesting stuff like pattern recognition in genomes I think yesterday we had a wonderful talk at the keynote and uh, there were all these little patterns coming up in uh, genomes I think that would be a wonderful application just for a, for a neural network because it cannot just match things that you see like, okay, you have a red hat and if I get an orange hat to be in, installed with my uh, Dutch, you know, background, <laughs> then it's a good match. So once you have this working model, is the idea that that's something you can use uh, to test hypotheses against and do experiments, but inside the computer? Is that the idea? Exactly. This okay. is what we already started doing with, uh, we have certain learning algorithms which are very similar to what really happens in the brain. So like it's called spike time dependent plasticity, for example. And what is not possible today is that if you want to do a hypothesis, how something works in a real brain, you need to have it on a larger scale. And today with, with the CPUs, this is just not going to work unless you have a, a super cluster in your, in your barn or somewhere. So, so what we are going to do is we bring it to this million of neurons or millions of neurons real time, and then we can really start to do cool stuff because you have the scale for the mm -hmm. first time.